guys welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome my name is Alyssa and I'm so glad that you're here today I'm so excited to take you guys along to bake with me for autumn and to get in the word with me I found a couple recipes on Pinterest that I'm super excited to make the first one is a vegan pumpkin spice latte and vegan pumpkin chocolate chip banana muffins. I'm pretty sure that this recipe is not specifically vegan, but I'm gonna go ahead and substitute some of the ingredients to make it vegan. So I'm super excited about that. All right, let's get baking. We got a couple ripe bananas here. We got some simple truth chocolate chips, got some organic light brown sugar, sugar in the raw, pumpkin puree, little cupcake tins, grabbed some cinnamon, some vanilla extract, baking soda, some flour of course, and some ground flaxseed which this is what I'm going to use as the egg substitute. Something else I'll also be using that I totally forgot to mention is this vegan earth balance butter sticks. A mixing bowl, measuring cup, some teaspoon and tablespoon measuring cup, some various mixing spoons, a whisk, and of course our cupcake tin. Let's get to baking.
while the muffins are baking, I'll go ahead and start on our vegan spiced pumpkin latte. Here are all of the ingredients we'll need. We'll need some non-dairy whipped cream, non-dairy milk, cinnamon, pumpkin puree, maple syrup, and brown sugar. And of course, our coffee. We're going to top it off with some cinnamon. Okay guys, here we are. I wanted to go ahead and do a little first impressions with this pumpkin spice latte and see how I like it. Let's go ahead and try this. I'm so excited. Okay, that's really good. I'm not sure if all I'm tasting so far is the whipped cream and the cinnamon, but I like it. Also, my husband likes it too, so that's a good sign. Okay guys, so today I wanted to read through 1 Corinthians 13, which is a short but sweet chapter about love and God's love. So let's go ahead and open up our Bibles together. Okay, here we are. And by the way, the version of the Bible today I am reading is NIV for reference. And a couple other fun tools I have with me is a Bible study journal. And then on hand, I also just have a highlighter and a pen. Okay, let's dive right in. Okay, you guys, so I just wanted to go ahead and read you some of the verses that stood out to me the most. Let's go ahead and start on verse 1. If I speak in tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clinging cymbal. If I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. I feel like these couple verses are really encouraging and humbling to remember that no matter what you do to honor God, no matter how much faith you have, no matter how much you give to the poor or anything, all of these things are nothing if you don't have a love. It really helps us keep our eyes focused on the love and compassion of the Father that we should be showing others. And moving on to verses 4 through 8, it actually gives a description of what love is and more specifically the characteristics of God's love for us. So let's go ahead and read those verses together. 
Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. That description right there is really humbling of what is love like? Not only is this the characteristics of God's love for us, but how we love others. Okay, now let's go ahead and jump to verses 11 and 12. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part that I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. So again, I think this is really encouraging that as we grow in the Lord and our minds are also shifted and changed by God and through the Holy Spirit to be focusing on Him, we grow in our childlike ways to become more wise. And then lastly, let's go ahead and read verse 13 together. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. What a perfect way to end this chapter. Honestly, like that is again highlighting how important love is. Of course, faith and hope are super important, but without love, they are just meaningless. So this is a really encouraging chapter to read, and I'm so glad that you guys read this along with me. We actually just had daylight savings, and I am grateful that we got another hour of sleep, of course, but with the main significant changes that it's starting to get darker earlier. I will say that I have noticed in myself, just in the last few days, a little bit of seasonal depression starting. And I know I'm not alone here, especially those of you who live in the Pacific Northwest and deal with a lot of rain. You guys know exactly how gloomy the weather can be and how it can start to affect our moods and affect our day-to-day -day lives. So I'm really glad for this time today to sit down with you guys and dive into scripture about love because it gave me a lot of peace in my heart to be reminded of how important it is to have love and to be reminded of God's great love for us. Let me know down below if you guys are also struggling with seasonal depression and also let me know any encouragements or scriptures you guys have that really help you get through this season. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.